Simply, you either had on the third day of intensive steroids, and because I'm not mathematically in, uh, uh, um, orientated, the first day was the day of admission. That was day one. It wasn't day zero. Day two was the, the second, and, uh, 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 and so on the third day. If you had a stool frequency still above eight times a day, or you had a CRP of over 45 and a stool frequency of between three and eight, then you had an 85% chance of coming to collect me on that admission. And I think it's those absolutes, and it stood the test of time. There's the Sweden Formulant Colitis Index, and which is, um, needs a calculator to work it out, but it really comes to the same thing, combining stool frequency and, and surgery, and that was used in the Gunayana study of, of, of infliximab. And in fact, if you look at all the predictive factors, there's a, there's a sort of algorithm that you can work around that helps you predict the outcome. So take admission, I've mentioned that uh, the number of true love and witch criteria, but you can also, the plain film, if you've got toxic dilatation when you come in, you've got an 85% chance <laughs> of colectomy uh, um, on that admission. If you've got these little uh, opacities, these mucosal islands that you can see on a plane abdominal x-ray, stand faster CT scan, uh, you again associated with a colectomy. If you're hypoalbuminemic, then you've got a 42% um, chance of colectomy. And if you've got deep ulcers, then that's also associated with colectomy. Again, it's biological severity. But what are deep ulcers? We'll return to that. Then you get the monosol frequency on the third day. You look at the, the different indices, and I don't, didn't, um, okay, the Oxford index is one, but, but just use an objective index and, uh, um, uh, and, and, uh, and have that influence decision making. Because on day five, you really, um, the, 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 that having influence decision making at that stage, you can still, on the fifth day, you can, children in particular, the very nice work of Dan Turner using the PUKAI, which is a simple clinical index, is uh, reliably affects colectomy. And the after discharge without colectomy, if you avoid that, then you, a third, will have another episode. And this, you know, it, it, it seems complex in a way. It's, 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 it's very detailed. But what appeals to me is bringing metrics into medicine. And I think that it helps uh, us quantify the uh, aspects that allow us to use our clinical judgment. Because clinical judgment alone, without any anchor points, is not generally to be relied upon. So what do I advise then, uh, then on the third day if they're meeting these criteria? Then I discuss the medical strategy, the patient's views. Think about whether, how they're going to modify the pattern, whether it's a first attack or whether they're on azathioprine, and, uh, and uh, what's the prospect of controlling it the long term. Absolutely get the surgeons in at that stage. Why? Because it's contingency planning. I'm not saying to the, 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 the surgeons, can you take this patient's colon out? I'm merely saying, come and say hi to the, the, the patient. Just show that you're human. And the patient can then ask you questions, get the stoma nurse, again contingency planning, where no decision is, is contingent on that visit, and then they can start asking questions. They take a couple of days or whatever to, to, to work around, and it's thinking ahead, which I think is so important. But, the, um, uh, but in the UK, we're not very good at using rescue therapy, because if you look at the, uh, um, the patients in our national audit in 2006 and again in 2008, you can see that um, the uh, um, days, number of days to surgery is, is, is 10. But look here, the number on using cyclosporin was only a quarter. Numbers using infliximab has reached the dizzy heights of 13%, which means that 60% went direct to surgery. Now, that may be appropriate if you're hanging on for 10 days or, or, or more, but it is an opportunity missed for many patients. So just reflect quickly on the different options. And these are all the data on cyclosporin, that not all randomized uh, trials, or, although Simon Lichtiger's on the, on, on the left side was originally. And you can see the response rate is about the, uh, generally, is, is about 80%, apart from the, 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 the Leuven study by Gert Hans um, uh, was, was somewhat lower. The trouble with cyclosporin is these are Leuven data rather than ours, but ours are very similar, um, just show a general reduction uh, in, in people surviving 
without colectomy. And uh, in other words, the peop people who kept their colons in seven years down the line, you're as low as 12%. In some other studies, it, um, it's about 40% uh, to retain their colons. But it's a deferring option rather than a curative option. If you look at infliximab, well, um, Look at all the papers on infliximab, and it, uh, say uh, um, uh, 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 a couple, I think one uh, there was uh, uh, an RCT. They haven't got the, uh, um, these, the sorry, these are all the retrospective series. We've got the prospective study of Yana in a moment uh, to make a point on. And you can see that the response rate is perhaps broadly um, similar. This, these are the data which were, were well established back in 2007 and then the, the, well, the commonly cited uh, study by Gunnar Yarar um, uh, of a randomized control trial of infliximab as rescue therapy. This slide makes the point that the patients who responded best to infliximab were those who seemed to have moderate um, uh, the severe disease according to the different index, um, although the overall significant difference was uh, 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 in colectomy rate at 90 days um, was, was, was highly significant. And then comes the SISIF study, I touched on this yesterday, uh, driven by uh, Mark Lamar and uh, uh, Dave Ladahari as the, the, the first author, where they took patients who had, been, who had, a, uh, had sev uh, biologically severe colitis, they'd had seven days of, uh, of intravenous steroids. They still had their, um, um, uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, they, they, they still, they had severe disease uh, according to the Lictiger uh, Modified True Love and Witch Severity Index. And they then randomized them either to intravenous cyclosporin for, uh, um, uh, for seven days or given them infliximab and they, they continued therapy and the primary um, Endpoint was the um, uh, uh, was um, uh, was complex in that they were looking for treatment failure. So this was, they weren't looking for treatment success. The primary endpoint they were looking for treatment failure. In other words, they defined treatment failure as non-response at uh, 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 day seven or a relapse somewhere between the seventh and the, the, the uh, from one week to three months or lack of steroid-free remission at three months or colectomy, serious advent event or death and. There's clearly no difference between the two. If you look at the response rates now, at the seven-day response rates, hey, when you think back to those studies, those retrospective studies, they have a ring of credibility there, don't they? So both of them work. There's no question about that. What's interesting is that it may be that the speed of response, interesting with infliximab, may be slightly quicker because this uh, data which hasn't uh, yet been presented I think is the um, uh, shows the analysis that the median time to response of infliximab was uh, four days and the median time of was five days I would have predicted it was the other way around but there you go but what does a day's difference make but it means that having given either you ought to be waiting about four days so you need to make the decision to start it at the earliest opportunity but um, uh, adverse events, quite interesting. Um, infection, no difference between the two. Overall, there's a slightly higher, they're numerically higher with infliximab. Um, but the ones which catch your eye are the, the, the hepatobiliary um, uh, adverse events there. And also, quite interesting um, that uh, it's the UC worsening was, was, was more common with uh, infliximab numerically. But there's uh, clearly not power to show a difference. And there's a UK study which is much larger, which is, uh, I hope, will, will give some further, interviews, uh, further inf information. What then about giving both? Well, if you give both, I think that you need to focus on adverse events. And this is a paper which has only just appeared in the American Journal earlier on this year, uh, again by the, the French Jeté group, where they took patients who had been treated with cyclosporin, waited a day and, and, um, uh, and given infliximab, or treated with infliximab, waited a magnificent 18 days, median 18 days before giving them cyclosporin, and they looked at the outcome, and they presented this at DDW what a couple of years ago, um, uh, suggesting that the fact that three years down the line, a third of them um, still had their colon, presented that as a success. I have to say, some success, especially when it comes at the cost of one death 
16 serious infections which include liver abscesses, colonic CMV. So my, my take-home message is don't use both.